Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're watching this. It has been a bit of a while since we've done anything a bit spooky. We have covered a lot of true crime recently, and so today is to look at the strange and unusual. So today we are going to be talking about Jim Fallon. Jim Fallon is a neuroscientist, and at the time of this video he is 75 years old. He was born on October 18th, 1947. He is currently working as a professor of psychiatry and human behaviours in the University of California. So why are we discussing this gent today? Well, Jim Fallon is a very interesting person and we are going to be talking about one of his studies today. He has also incorporated this study into his book, The Psychopath Inside, A Neuroscientist's Personal Journey into the Dark Side of the Brain. And I thought it would be a topic that you would also find interesting. Let's go through his research first and unpack it later. Jim Fallon wanted to conduct a study over the brain patterns of convicted criminals. He also wanted to conduct a study over Alzheimer's versus healthy brains. He wanted to study the brain patterns and see if anything correlated differently in those two groups. So for his first study, he had to contact a prison and he had to ask prisoners if they would be interested in being part of his study. And from this, he had loads of interest. So this study was not going to be hard for him. He knew that he could get a lot of people involved in this study because in a prison, they don't really get much time to go out and do anything else because they're prisoners. So he had adequate amounts of brain patterns to go through for the criminal control group. But he found it really hard to get participants for his other study. The study for Alzheimer's versus those with healthy brains was very difficult to get participants for because people would have to take time off work, they'd have to find childcare, and some people just ultimately did not want to do it. So Mr. Fallon was thinking, well, how can I get enough people for this case study? So he decided to ask his friends and family to help him too. And just for good measure, he decided to throw his own brain into the mix as well. So to make this study really fair, he decided just to put all the brain scans in together and mix them up. All that they would have on them is a serial number which correlated to the person's name and identity. So whilst he's studying the Alzheimer's brains versus the healthy brains, he's going through and he realises that, oh no, one of the brain scans from the prisoner batch has got into this brain study of Alzheimer's versus healthy brains. So he wants to check out this anomaly. So what he does is cross-references everything to make sure that everything is in place. And to his shock, he realises that both case studies, the prisoners and then the Alzheimer patients versus the healthy brain patients, are in the exact correct places. Which means that one of his friends or family has the brain of a killer. They deemed all the criminals that participated in that study to be psychopaths. So because the brain patterns were exactly the same in his friends and family, one of his friends and family could be deemed a psychopath. He had to work out which friend or family member had the unusual scan. So he sorted through and aligned the study number with the identity of the person, which to his absolute shock, he found that the brain scan with the anomaly was his own. Jim Fallon had found that through his study, his own orbital cortex was the same as the prisoners who have committed serious crimes, including murder. He double-checked and then checked again that his findings were accurate. He thought he would tell his mum about his discovery, but she wasn't the least bit surprised. She then went on to tell him that he had English and Irish ancestry through New York colonial settler Thomas Cornell who was convicted of murdering his mother and hung in 1667. She also then told him that many other murders have also been committed in the family line because the Cornell family ancestry lines with Lizzie Borden's. Lizzie Borden was tried in 1892 for murdering her father and her stepmother with an axe. Jim Fallon's brain was similar enough that his brain could be deemed psychopathic. So this is where I speak to you directly. Jim Fallon has the brain of a psychopath, but has led a fantastic, positive and well-respected career. He has never been arrested or been to prison. He has a great connection with all of those around him. So is being a psychopath a learnt trait? We hear about a lot of true crime stories where they had a really bad upbringing or they were tortured as a child or something really went wrong. And those people would later commit crimes and then blame it on what happened to them when they were younger. So could you believe that criminals are not born, but raised? And I'm not only saying that it could have been by their parents, but it could have been the influence of how they grew up, their experiences, their background, but yes, sometimes their parents' influence. This video is more of a question than it is a statement. I am not qualified to make this a factual video. 
but I am really curious that after telling you this story, what you think of it. Do you think that it's possible that if a criminal or someone who had a psychopathic mind with the same brain pattern as someone who ended up being a killer, do you think that it was possible, should they have had really positive upbringings, that they could have avoided the life of crime? We do often hear in a lot of true crime stories that they didn't have love, they didn't have a positive role model, they didn't have good influence. Or do you think that Jim Fallon is just a wonderful anomaly? I would just love to know your opinions because I am not qualified to talk about this on a neuroscience level, but it was just so interesting to me that once I heard this story I wanted to talk to you about it on sheer personal opinion. Do you think that if a criminal was treated really well as a child that the crime would have never happened. There are definitely some cases where a criminal is just a criminal because they just want to be a bad person. But do you think that every single criminal, had they been given a better start in life, would have turned to crime if we look at the subject of Jim Fallon? But it's an incredibly quick video today just because I'm really interested in your thoughts. Please comment below of what you think about this and if you disagree entirely let me know. I'm here to hear your opinions. But for now that's all from me. Thank you and bye-bye.